The Königsegg Jamera was presented last night and we have to talk about it. First of all, the Jamera idea came up after Königsegg did the Regera. The Regera didn't have a gearbox and instead only used one gear and a torque converter. Electric motors boosted at low speeds when the combustion engine was revving low and couldn't provide much torque. The idea was now that if they use a smaller, slimmer engine, they could push the engine onto the rear axle with an electric motor each side, driving the rear wheels. So they took their well-known combustion system, tuned it to 300 horsepower per liter, and the result is a 600 horsepower three-cylinder engine with two turbochargers and their three-valve system, so this engine doesn't have camshafts. So this three-cylinder engine was sitting longitudinally on the rear axle. One electric motor each side for the rear wheels and one on the crankshaft, so it can also start the engine and work as a generator. Since the engine sits on the rear axle, it's hard to also drive the rear axle. And so they designed a carbon prop shaft and a carbon torque pipe to the front to drive the front wheels. So that makes it an all-wheel drive car, which is not a bad idea for a large four-seater car with lots of power. And because of the more rearward sitting engine, they now had enough space for four passengers. The car was presented at the Geneva Motor Show in 2020. But the concept wasn't perfect. Being a four-seater means it's going to be the heaviest Koenigsegg so far. And there's only a three-cylinder engine with only 600 horsepower, which in the Koenigsegg world isn't much. Additionally, they use the direct drive concept of the Regero, which means the engine only reaches its power peak at high speeds. For a large powerful V8, that's okay, because it's still powerful at low RPMs, but it's different if you have five cylinders less. So they needed to compensate for that with powerful electric motors. Being powerful also means bigger diameter, and so they used gears to transmit the power to the rear rear drive shafts. Now they could position them higher and run them at a more efficient speed. But more electric power to compensate for a less powerful combustion engine also meant that a larger battery was required, which increased weight again. Additionally, if you don't want to increase battery weight too much, the battery won't last for that long. And that would mean that if the battery is empty, you're driving around in a Koenigsegg with a three-cylinder engine and front-wheel drive. So although the car concept, like design, proportions and seating arrangement, was already pretty fixed, Koenigsegg was looking for a way to improve the concept. In the meantime, they developed the Yesco with its innovative 9-speed LST transmission. If you want to know all about that, check out my other video below. So a 9-speed gearbox would allow to reach the power peak of the three-cylinder engine nine times until top speed, instead of only once. So they could use the engine more efficiently. Additionally, development and overall cost of the complex LST gearbox are relatively high. And they're only selling it in the Yesco. So if they can sell it in another model, it also makes sense from a business perspective. And so they packaged the LST gearbox in front of the engine and pushed the electric motor to the front diff, replacing the torque converter, which wasn't needed anymore. Since they could now use the three-cylinder engine more efficiently, they could reduce the electric power, resulting in a smaller battery and less weight. But the general problem with the combustion engine only being linked to the front axle was still there. The idea came up to reduce complexity, weight and cost by removing the side electric motors and instead design one very powerful machine for the front position. The result is their black matter electric motor with 800 horsepower and 1250 newton meters of torque. But the problem was now that all this power was only on the front axle and they needed to somehow drive the rear wheels without changing the overall concept of the car. They already used the slim gearboxes along the sides of the combustion engine before to connect it to the electric motors. They now used the idea, extended these gearboxes and connected them to the gearbox. Koenigsegg calls that Turbillion, so now LSTT. So the result is now that because of their 9-speed gearbox, they can use the engine more efficiently. There are only two power plants, one combustion engine and one electric motor. Both of them can drive each axle separately, or all together. The drivetrain is a lot simpler, lighter, and coincidentally, after we just talked about it a few days ago, it's exactly the drivetrain of the Opel Calibra DTM car, which started its career 30 years ago. Just in the Jamera, it's turned 180 degree. 
We just talked about how genius and unique this drivetrain is and I thought we would never see it anywhere again. But now the Koenigsegg Jumeirah has it. And it looks like they just incrementally got to this concept through development. The next step was that Koenigsegg tried to fit the V8 Jesko engine in the existing Jumeirah car. That didn't work at the beginning because the exhaust primaries clashed with the gearboxes at the side. Koenigsegg then turned the cylinder heads to have the hot exhaust in the V and the more compact intakes at the side. In terms of length, the V8 is not much longer than a three-cylinder engine. So they could make it work and even without changing the exterior. And today the Jamera is offered in two versions. The base model with 1400 horsepower and the three-cylinder engine and 2300 horsepower with the Jesko V8. It's no surprise that it is the heaviest Koenigsegg ever built, but it's also their first four-seater and their first all-wheel drive car. The Tourbillon gearbox solution looks really heavy, but it enables them to simplify the drivetrain and to drive all four wheels with a combustion engine, including torque vectoring at both axles. Christian von Koenigsegg said the car is substantially under two tons. On the homepage, they state 2300 horsepower and 1.11 horsepower per kilogram which gets us 2,072 kg. The difference could also be caused by a full and empty fuel tank, which is 115 liters here. So the Jumeirah will be the ultimate Gran Turismo with amazing performance, long range, four seats and large trunk. How do you like the new Koenigsegg Jumeirah? Let me know in the comments below and check out my other videos for more.